Hey guys, welcome back to the Dynamics Post. I'm Scott. And in the past, we've talked about different types of replenishment that Dynamics 365 can do. We've talked about wave demand replenishment. We've talked about min-max replenishment. We've recently talked about zone replenishment. So this week, we're gonna talk about uh, load demand replenishment. So let's take a look at that when we get right back. If you're using the load planning workbench, this is probably the replenishment method that you may want to take a look at. So what this does is if you're manually creating loads and manually releasing those loads to the warehouse, the load demand replenishment will look at the open loads and create replenishment work based on those loads. So what it's going to do is if you need three and you've only got two on a shelf, it's going to do a replenishment for one. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup on this. It's pretty typical of, of the other setups in warehouse management. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup now. First thing we'll do, let's take a look at the setup. So we're going to go underneath warehouse management here. And the first place we want to look at is the actual template. So we're going to go underneath setup and then replenishment and then replenishment templates there. I've set up a new template and the ID for it is load demand. The description is load demand replenishment. The replenishment type is going to be load demand. Okay, so everything else across there is blank. And I've set up one template line for this, sequence number one. The description is going to be load demand. The unit of measure is going to be each. The applicable demand is full quantity. So if we take a look at that, the other option is going to be a loose quantity. And according to the documentation, the loose quantity is going to be any the quantity that doesn't fit into a box quantity. So the example I believe they gave was a box quantity of 50 and a, a, a needed quantity of 125. So the loose quantity in that case is going to be 25 because you got two boxes of 50, which would be 100, and then you have a loose quantity of 25. For this example, I'm just going to use the uh, full quantity though. And then the product query mode I've got is going to be product query. I'm using an actual product rather than a product variant. Now, if we can take a look at the queries, if I go up to select products here, I've got this one wide open. So um, if you're going to have multiple uh, template lines where you're handling items differently, you, you'd want to uh, set up item criteria. But in my case, I've got one line, so I'm going to have that set for all items. And then the important one on this one is the select locations to replenish. So this is what locations it's going to look for to actually replenish. So in my case, I'm going to replenish my picking locations, which are identified by the location profile pick no LP, which means no license plate. So it's my picking locations, no license plate, and I have my warehouse 24 specified. Then after the uh, template is set up, the only other things we need to do is just the normal cast of characters here. So if we go, we need to have, make sure we have a work template. So if I go to my work template here, I've got a very simple work template set up. So we've got replenishment, and I'm using warehouse 24. So this is the template I'm using, and just a simple pick and a put. All right, same thing on our location directives. So if I go to warehouse management, uh, set up and location directives, and then the work order type is gonna be replenishment. So I've got a, a pick set up, this pick from bulk. And the only thing that I have uh, here in the query is gonna be my bulk location profile ID. So it's gonna pick from bulk. And then on my put side, I've got uh, three rules here. So I've got pick to, put to fixed, Consolidate or put to picking. So put to fix is going to look for a fixed location first. If it can't find that, then it's going to consolidate it if there's some merchandise in, in another shelf somewhere. It'll put it there and then uh, it'll go and put to picking. So I've got a query here on the put to picking and my location profile ID is pick no LP. Okay, so as far as the setup, we see we need the, the replenishment template. We need the work template, and then we need the location directors. Pretty much what you'd normally expect us to see, right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at an example where I've created uh, two loads. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sales order and create another load off of that sales order. We're, all, we're using the load planning workbench to do all of this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run our replenishment on that and see what happens and what kind of replenishment work gets generated. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Now what we'll do is take a look at an example and see how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a sales order. So I'm going to go underneath uh, sales and marketing. I'm going to go to all sales orders and I'm going to create a new sales order. Count number I'm going to use is US-004. And since I'm using warehouse 24, I want to make sure that everything lands there. So I'm going to specify 24. And I'm going to add an item of 51516, right? 
for a quantity of one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to a load. So I'm gonna go up to the warehouse tab. And instead of doing the release to warehouse, I'm gonna go through the load. So I'm gonna go to the load planning workbench. And the screen, if you haven't seen the load planning workbench before, it allows you to add that line to an existing load down here. But we're gonna go and add it to a new load. So we're gonna to go to supply and demand and we're gonna to go to a new load. And we need to give it a load template ID, which is the 40 foot container and go ahead and say, okay. All right, so what it's done has been added to this USMF000484 load, okay? Now we can take a look at our open loads here. If we go back under Warehouse Management, and we go over underneath Loads tab, and then let's take a look at open loads. This, the open loads are going to become important in just a minute. So I've got three open loads here, and this is the one we just created. Now all three of these are exactly the same that, that you saw created, so there's a... 1516 on this one, 1516 on this one, and 1516 on this one. So we need three, right? Okay, so before we go and run the replenishment, let's go ahead and take a look at the inventory. So let's go underneath product information management, and then we'll go to release products. And then the item we have is a 1516, so I'm just gonna highlight that line there, and then I'm gonna go to the on-hand inventory. So as you can see right now, we have, um, We've got a thousand in a bulk location, so we don't have any in a picking location. So I'm gonna expect it's gonna pull three. As you can see, we have three reserved there from, from our three other orders. I'm gonna expect it's gonna pull three from this thousand and put it into a picking location. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're gonna run that. So if we go to warehouse management, the uh, load demand is actually run from a batch job, kind of like the min-max, it's its own separate batch. So let me just collapse this all just to make it uh, easier to see. And so we're under warehouse management. We're going to go underneath the replenishment section here. And this is the one we'd normally run for min max. That's not what we want to do. In this case, we want to do a load demand replenishment. So we're going to click on that one. Now, so I've already got my template in here, but uh, you would just use the drop down here and specify which load demand template you're using. So mine is load demand. And then this one is important as well. So we have records to include. I'm only going to look at loads with those with the open status on them. Okay, so we're only going to look at where the loads are open. I can I could specify the exact load if I wanted to, but I'm just going to run it across all three loads. All right, so we'll go ahead and say okay. All right, then we get a message that it's completed. Let's go down here and look and see. It says operation completed. It tells us that work has been created. So let's go ahead and take a look at the work that was created for that. So we're going to go back underneath warehouse management. And go underneath work and let's take a look at all work and here's our replenishment that was created let's go ahead and open this one up and as you can see we have open work here and it's going to pick three from bulk and then move three into the picking location so as i mentioned from the outset if you're using the load planning workbench you may want to go ahead and take a look at this type this replenishment method here because this allows you to use the demand that's on your actual loads and create replenishment work from that. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, I hope you did. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, like it. Uh, that helps the distribution on the video. And also, if you like this Dynamics 365 content and like seeing these different processes in Dynamics 365, go ahead and, go ahead and subscribe. If you, when you subscribe, you'll get notified when I upload a new video. Okay, so again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.